Hello and welcome, this is Power Drift, I'm your host and that is a new car. With those pleasantries out of the way, let's get cracking. Hold on, this is where I usually start the review from. Let's shake things up a bit. Show me top 10 overused cliches. Yeah, that works. Alright, this is the 2021 Jeep Compass. I'm going to use a cliche that I just found, actually knew about it all along, but uh, don't judge a book by its cover. And that applies so well to the new Jeep Compass because they've changed precious little on the outside. But the Jeep guys, they weren't focusing on that, obviously. Uh, they were focusing on something else, something really big. And I'm going to bring in another cliche here. It's what's on the inside that matters. And to that effect, man, did they go to town converting the cabin inside out over here because everything is new everything there's a new touch screen there's a new steering wheel there's a new instrument cluster there's a new center console it's all new and they haven't left anything the same what i really like is that there's substance to this transformation it's not just faff take this 10.1 inch touch screen for instance it doesn't just look good it's easy to use fluid and responsive and it even has wireless carplay now I just need an iPhone. But wait, you can get all of this easily off of a brochure. As easy as you can get your insurance from Insurance Deco. What I really want to know is if the compass drives well. Keep in mind that uh, not a lot has changed about this compass, mechanically that is. So it still has the same two liter diesel. It still has the same power, same torque. Everything's the same. What's different is the fact that well, the engine has been tuned slightly to make it BS6 compliant. And what that means for you is that the moment you get into the car and start driving it, uh, you'll find that the engine feels slightly gravelly at low speeds. What's also missing is that spike of power, that addictive uh, rush that you used to get in the previous compass, that's not there anymore. Uh, once again, these can be attributed to the change to BS6. So the engine, it pulls a lot more linear now, it's a lot more it wants to be smooth and it wants to be calm, but the gruffness gets in the way. Now there's another part to the Compass's story which has two sides again. Uh, on the plus side, on one hand, it is a quick car, no doubt about that. Zero to 100 comes up in very little time. On the other hand, you wouldn't want to push the Compass this hard because the moment you do, you realize that the engine just gets really gruff, just like it did at lower revs. That's a bit of a downer. As for the 9-speed torque converter, it is a nice gearbox, no doubt about that, but at the end of the day, it's not the fastest either. Uh, what you will notice about it is that when you are out on the highway and you need to make a quick overtake, uh, expecting it to go down two or three cogs instantaneously, that doesn't happen all the time. Say in city traffic or just when you're cruising, it's perfectly fine. What probably doesn't help is that there are nine cogs to choose from. That's a lot. Do you need so many? Where it absolutely comes together for the compass is in the ride and handling department. It's set up slightly on the stiffer side. So even bigger bumps, they get absorbed without any issues at all. But where that pays off handsomely is when you're pushing the car hard around corners because it stays absolutely flat. Granted, you wouldn't necessarily be doing that in an SUV of this size, but when you feel like, you know it'll have your back. And the steering as well, it's actually very, very nice because it stays wonderfully consistent in terms of weight, especially when you're doing quick direction changes. All I have to say is big thumbs up here. But wait, this is a 4x4. So how does it do with a little light off-roading? I say light because Let's be realistic, not a lot of you are going to be mounting it on a rock the size of its wheel and okay never mind that. Now it's time to put that 4x4 to use but before that I'm just going to quickly update my insurance policy from Insurance Deco. I'm going to be the only one who has that irrational fear of a car just flipping over right. And I'm going to start by just using this rotary, oh wait there's no rotary dial. 
What you now get is a toggle switch, which essentially focuses on sand, mud, snow, and auto. You get two options, two traction modes. I'm just gonna stick it into sand and mud, and yeah, let it do its own thing. Now, uh, what you need to keep in mind is that the compass that I'm driving right now doesn't come with any off-road specific kit. It's all just normal. So to that regard, the car is shot with Bridgestone Duranzas. These are normal, everyday road-going tires. On top of that, the suspension, it hasn't been tuned specifically for bad road. It's just been tuned for our normal roads and that's to be expected. But even the ground clearance, it hasn't been jacked up or it hasn't been raised significantly so that we can go off-roading like this. It's just normal. But I'm not worried in the least because I have 4x4 and that's pretty much all the reassurance that I need. Uh, Non-roads like this one, yeah, not an issue at all. Uh, I may be looking like I'm bouncing around a bit, but genuinely speaking, I'm quite comfortable. I can pretty much do this for an extended amount of time for sure. And honestly, the biggest saving grace is that no matter how hard or how heavy or how bumpy these roads look, I haven't bottomed out even once. That's good. Wait, wait, wait. What's that? Push harder. Hey, Captain's orders. Uh, I'm just gonna switch to auto, four wheel drive lock, and just for fun, let me just put this traction control off. And we're off. What I absolutely love is that the steering, it just keeps on talking to you. It's so communicative and it just has a nice, ever present kind of assurance that it's always there, just telling you exactly what to do next. Wait, this is sounding more and more like my wife, but you get the point. Seriously though, hard, bumpy roads, roads that you're likely to encounter, is just not a problem for the compass at all. It's hardy enough, it's rugged enough, and what I really like about it is that the suspension can take whatever you throw its way. The steering tells me exactly what the front wheels are up to. And that, along with the reassuring heft that it has at every speed, low speeds, high speeds, just really, really enjoyable taking this car off-road. I like this. I really, really like this. You know, the Jeep Compass sits in a very funny position. <laughs> Much like this one. That's my handiwork, by the way. But seriously, on the one hand, it competes with cars like the Creta and the Seltos. And on the other, it competes with much larger SUVs like the Tucson, for instance. What I can't deny it is that it's got a lot going for it. Good looks, it's comfortable on the inside, it's got plenty of kit, and it's handy off-road as you can see. But you'd be paying 30 big ones for this. That is a bit hard to digest. Then again, value means different things to different people. And if you want an SUV that can pretty much do it all and park like this while at it, the Jeep Compass needs to figure on your list. Anyway, thanks for watching. That's that. And uh, I'm Ronak, this is Powerdrift. And let me know what you think about the new Jeep Compass. I think I should move this. It might tip over. Yeah, it's going to tip over. <laughs>